Today we're gonna to look a little bit closer at the render items through the master drag function. So we actually talked about this in the what's new in Reaper 5.979 video, uh, but I didn't really go through a demonstration of how it actually works, um, what the differences between kind of the older way and the newer way are. But if you didn't know, Reaper 5.979 added uh, the option to export items through the master track effects. Um, and we're just gonna go through all the details of that in this video. All right, so we're gonna start off with just this item here. So this sound is what we're exporting. So just to go through every possible option, uh, we're gonna start off with the uh, an effect on the item on its take effects chain. I'm using FabFilter Saturn with the destroy mode just for a bit crash effect. So it's very clear that an effect is added. And if we export that using the um, selected media item option, select the item, and I'll just put this in the right folder. It's uh, render items test renders. So this is selected item and take effects. And yeah, so here we go. So there's the first render. And I think it's predictably going to have an effect on it. So I'll just drag that. And so this first item, yeah, it has the effect on it. So now we're going to move the effect from the uh, take effects chain onto the track effects chain. So I've got my effects window here for the take effects. I'm going to hold down option and drag it. That's the same as um, alt on windows. And so now you can see the item effects is empty and the take effect or the track effects is now active. Sounds like this. It sounds the same. So now we'll just select this item export, and this time I'm just going to rename this track effects. Yeah, let's see what happens. Render the item, I'm importing this in, and we'll be able to tell right away from the waveform whether this has the effect on it, and yeah, pretty clearly it has the effect. All right, so what if this track is inside of a folder, like we have here, and the effects aren't on the track, but they're on the folder track above it? So when we play back this project, we hear the effect. Now, if we export this item, folder effects, render it, bring that item in here. And you can see here that this is different. What do we have here? We have the original sound. So this is the critical difference when using the render selected items um, function, you only get what's on the item or what's on its own track. Uh, anything above it, anything in parallel doesn't get rendered. But let's just continue with these experiments. We'll move the effect from the folder track over to the master track. Again, that was an option drag to move that effects chain. So now we're on master track with this effect. If I play it back, sounds the same, but when we render it and we call it master effects, import it, remember to turn off the effect on the master, play it back. It's the original sound. So what if we actually want that effect? We would go into the render window and instead of source selected media items, we're doing selected media items via master. Just modify this name, which doesn't affect you at all. Just it helps us keep organized via master, master effects. And uh, this item is selected and I'm rendering it. And so I'll bring this uh, file in, and now we've got 
the master track effects printed onto this item that we exported. So now we're moving the effects over to the folder track. So again, rendering it and modifying this to be folder effects and render. And I'll get that file brought in here. So folder effects via master prints with the effect. Here's where things could be different. Let's try it with a reverb. A reverb on here, and I'm going to turn off the, um, the folder track effects, that, that bit crusher. We don't need that. Uh, but now this, this has a parallel path for going to a reverb. It sounds like this. Tons of reverb just to make it obvious. So uh, the source track is sending into this track called verb. Both tracks go to the master. We will select this, render it, and I'm going to go back to the selected media items option. Just rename this so we know what we're doing. And this will be send effects. You probably already know what's going to happen here, but let's see. Selected item with send effects exports as the clean item. No reverb. Now, let's do the same thing, but with the media items via master and selected item via master, send effects, render, and I'll import that. And that has the reverb printed on it. So previous to this update, you would have to make a time selection and then turn that time selection into a region and uh, solo the track and then export with the region bounds here in uh, like the region render matrix option here and uh, the selected regions go into the matrix and then enable the master for that. And so, yeah, you would have to do that for every single item that you want to export. With this new option, it is so much easier, and you can still use things like uh, keeping the file name, using the timeline order, uh, all those sorts of things. So let's just take this item, and I'll duplicate it a bunch of times. Um, double click here to select all the items. Let's render that. Selected items via master. So we've got 15 items here. I'm just going to clear that. We'll call it item, and then underscore. Uh, let's just do timeline order. Yeah, so it's going to render for the length of this item plus the tail through all the effects in here. And it's going to use this uh, naming scheme. So let's render that. So here's what we have in the folder. Looks like this. And if I import all of these files on a single track, um, we've got all these items with the name uh, exactly as we put it. So it's numbering it the way that I chose. It has the effects. You know, all these other items aren't duplicated onto these items that were exported. Only this track plus all of the routing um, free effects is included with that. For people making sound effects for games, for uh, sound libraries, for virtual instruments, this is going to be a huge workflow enhancement. Uh, this is going to save a lot of time. You don't need uh, scripts and, and custom actions um, as often for this particular task. So there you go. That is rendering items through the master. Hope you've enjoyed this tutorial. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Follow me on Facebook and Twitter. Support the Reaper blog through Patreon and visit reaperblog.net for a lot more tutorials. Thanks.